Welcome to another episode of Leading Las Vegas. I'm Danielle Ford of DanielleFord.com, where visibility makes a difference. And I'm here today with a longtime friend and amazing blogger, Allison Stagg. Hi. <laughs> she has a, a hilarious blog that you guys need to check out. She discusses dating in Vegas and or unsuccessfully dating in Las Vegas. <laughs> And yeah. <laughs> it's very much a com comic relief as well as eye-opening to a lot of the things that women, especially women in their 30s, uh, go through when looking for a potential partner here in the city of Sin. So, uh, Allie, can you tell us a little bit more about your blog and specifically like, what made you want to start documenting your dating life? Um, yeah, I've been single for over two years, and so I've been dating, and in December, at the end of December, I had a horrible date where I got walked out on after seven seconds, and... So, okay, so, <laughs> hold on. Did you, like, talk with this person beforehand? Yeah, he, we had been in contact for several months, and I kind of stopped responding because I was kind of seeing my ex again for a few months and so when I was doing that I kind of cut off all communication with any guys that I had met online mm -hmm. and then me and my ex stopped talking for the millionth time again and I was mm -hmm. like okay whatever and, and this guy happened to to write me a text a few days later and I was like not really feeling it but my friend was like you know what you just need to go on this date like it will get your mind off things and I was like you know what you're right what's it gonna hurt you know to go so I got a babysitter I got ready on a Thursday night drove all the way down to the strip and I walked in and I sat down and he looked at me disgusted and said you look nothing like your photos and he walked out and I, that had never happened to me before. Luckily, I, I had a bad feeling about it, and I actually had my best friend drive me down there. And so I texted her, and I was like, we need to abort, we gotta go. So we actually met, um, we were, then we were going up the escalators, my high heel got stuck in the escalator and shredded my shoe, and I was just like, I, this night could not be any worse. So I was telling my sister I, a couple days later about this, and she was like, all of your dating stories, you really need to start documenting these, mm -hmm. because the things that happen to you, I mean, are things that you see in movies. So I wrote, I, on a whim, I just went in, I wrote a blog, and I really didn't think more than five people would read it, and then all of a sudden I had 56 emails within a few hours of girls that were like, thank you for sharing, that happened to me, and like, I thought I was the only one, and I'm like, girl, that's a him problem, not a you problem, like, don't let it bother you, like, it, it, oh my God. and that's, and then it just has kind of gone from there. I have so many things moving <laughs> through my mind right now. Um, First of all, he said you look nothing like your picture. Okay, what pictures mm -hmm. are on your profile? Not that that would be a reason to leave, but are you... You know, I, I feel like I did a good job of representing who I am. You know, I'm in my 30s. I'm not 21 years old anymore. You know, I had full body shots. I had bathing okay. suit shots, um, no makeup shots. And then I did have, like, my head shots for my business and things like that. But, I mean, I had... I felt like they were good... There wasn't like abstract photos of you that just like didn't no. show you as a person and then he was su super surprised. Yeah. It. I mean, I I started asking people because then I got concerned. I was like, do I not look like my photos? So I started yeah. going around and showing people and and they were like, no, the, you do. You look like your photos. Did this guy look like his photos? No. You should have been like, and neither do you. I, I didn't even have Mike a chance. Oh. It was like a hooker transaction gone wrong, it almost felt like, because it was just like I sat down and I'm all dressed up nice, oh and then God. it's in this lounge full of all these people, and he just gets up and walks away and just, like, leaves me there. I'm like, I... Did I, anyone else, like, hear that go down? Yeah, a lot of people. Like, we were just sitting in the middle of a lounge with a lot of people there, so... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I just immediately got up and left, and thank goodness I had a feeling and had brought my best friend, or it would have been the worst. <laughs> wow. So at least you were able to take that uh, horrible experience and turn it into a positive. Totally. By totally. writing about it, which I think, like, you've seen me do stuff like that online and kind of share my past stories, but I feel like it's really important to turn your mess into your message. Yeah, Because you, you didn't realize how many people were going through the same thing until you put it out there, and they were like, Relatable, relatable. And that was just one incident. Like, it turns out a lot of things that I've gone through, <laughs> like breakups and, you know, romantic victories and heartache. Like, all these things that I've gone through, other people have gone through, mm -hmm. obviously. And um, it's really cool when I write about things and people write me and say, like, 
you know, how did you get through this heartbreak? Like I'm going through that right now. And it like, it really, I feel their pain because I've been there. And for me to be able to be like, you know, I can't make anything to magically go to go away, but you know, these are things I did that helped me move on from that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really cool. You guys have to check out Ali's new videos. So, you know, I do a lot of video and you've recently started doing video, but mm -hmm. we were, backstory, we, we went to high school together and we were in theater together. We were. We were in a bunch of musicals together. We were. <laughs> so we both kind of have that, that. I don't think that ever leaves you. You're always kind of like, where can I perform? Yeah. <laughs> Is it here? Yeah. Yeah. So my videos are very educational, like how to's. And I love how you are taking that kind of experience, but turning it into like a production. <laughs> yeah. It's mine are not serious by yeah. any means um, so far. It's, but. It is a little serious. Like the real, like the real thoughts that you have while on a date. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And th that's mm -hmm. just hilarious. So you guys, when you check out her blog, make sure you scroll down, look through for some of those videos because they are seriously hilarious. Like she's just great. <laughs> um, so what, what do you think like is the problem with men coming to meet a woman who's in her thirties? Like I was recently having a discussion with uh, someone else about that and it feels almost like like you said, I'm not a 21 year old cocktail waitress. Like mm -hmm. they expect you to be, even though they know you're not. Mm -hmm. So, like, what what is happening there? And another thing I've found is a lot of men, especially male friends um, that are single, always complaining that there's no good girls in Vegas. Have you have you seen people post things like that or or say that to you? I'm constantly like, you guys, <laughs> there are good women in Vegas. You're just looking in the wrong spots. Like, are you looking at bars and clubs? And do you have, what are your standards that you're looking for? Do, are you looking for a woman who meets professional and personal and emotional type of maturity level standards, mm -hmm. or is that not important to you at all? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, have you seen any of that? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes, like, I've seen so much of that. And I, all I can say is online dating has um, made men a lot more brazen and they definitely do things that they would never do in person. You know, um, they'll just, since it's just a little click and they can sit there, you know, in their underwear or whatever, and just send out messages like, Hey, you know, like what, and just say very vulgar things that they would never say to a woman's face. They would get smacked. But it, if they send out a hundred of those messages, I mean, someone's going to say yes, you know? And so I feel like the lack of respect in asking a woman out has been sort of lost in online dating mm -hmm. because there's no repercussion to whatever they say because it's not face to face. Like I would smack you, you know, if you said, if, if I got some of these things that I've gotten messages in, if they said that to me in person, it would have be, it would be an issue. Right. So I feel like online dating, um, men, have definitely lost the lack of respect for how to court a woman, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but then on the other hand, online dating is so, is so convenient. I mean, I'm a single mother, I have two kids, I'm busy, I work, go to school. So for me to have that a click away to be able to mm -hmm. filter through instead of sitting at a bar and waiting for guys to approach you or, you know, guys being too shy to approach you or, you or know. going on blind dates and getting ready and like not knowing anything about this person. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So I know you've had a lot of, a lot of bad and funny experiences, but you're still on there. You're still online dating. So have you had good experiences that just didn't work out? I mean, is there I have, yeah. hope for online dating? Yeah, there, I have. Um, I tend, I have had more bad dates than good dates. Um, what would you like give, like a ratio? <laughs> like, ratio, I would say 75% bad dates and 25% good dates. Okay. So it's worth, it's worth a shot. Or I'll have, but I also in the 75%, like I might have an okay date, but then they do something after that. I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> like that's oh, like, that, like a message later. Or they say something. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just like, okay, well, that, never mind. Send a dick pic. Yeah. <laughs> unsolicited <laughs> a dick pic. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever it is. Um, just go crazy. Like show up at your house. Like when they don't even, when you never gave them your address. I mean, just a lot of weird things have happened, but yeah, I've had a lot of good dates with, um, there are some gentlemen out there, but it just didn't work out. You know, I, uh -huh. it wasn't neutral, but you know, even if I walked in and they weren't what I expected, I was still polite and I still sat there and right. we went through the date because I'm an adult and that's what we do. You know, I definitely didn't say Sorry, no, thank you, you and walk out. Thought. Yeah. yeah. That's, and why is it that men feel like it's okay to do that to somebody? Like, 
I see men the way they act or things they say, and even in public when they shout, I'm like, who raised you? I'm like, did yeah. your mom raise you like that? They, they <laughs> have bad manners. I don't know what else to say. Just some of them have really bad manners in general. Wow. Yeah. So where do you think um, your blog and your dating life <laughs> will be taking you in the next couple of years? I know it's tough. I, I Being a single mom of two and just doing like literally anything for yourself, let alone dating and taking rolling the dice on who you're going to meet um what are your future plans for dating or blogging obviously you need more content for your blog yeah <laughs> i know i i actually think about that i'm like oh my gosh what if i meet someone and i start dating them so actually what i did was after i wrote my blog the entry that started um my blog i actually went back two years to okay. when i started dating and so now i've like kind of progressed and gone through I'm going through my dates one by one. And then I throw in other content because people will ask me questions or mm -hmm. they'll be like, you know, what are your thoughts on marriage or how, what do you think makes good companionship? So I address other things in there, too, of my personal experience, because I have experienced a lot. You know, I've been the crazy girlfriend that pressures for marriage and that you know, um, wants to move in and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why did, why, why did I do that? Now that I'm older and I can reflect back, like I can look at my mistakes and be like, learn from me, you know, learn from the mistakes mm -hmm. I've done or learn from the immature things I've done or, you know, because you don't want to make those same mistakes. So totally. I, I just, um, I'm just kind of taking it where, where it leads me right now. I'm going in order and I write about questions that I get in from my different readers and, who knows? I get a lot of people that ask me that. They're like, are you going to write a book? And I'm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just taking it day by day. And as long as they keep reading, I'm going to keep writing. So do you feel like um, there is a good pool of men out there? Um, and the men that you've met, are they mostly locals or are they tourists? Because I, I feel like uh, there's a prejudgment of the women in Vegas. And that's based on like who you see on the strip. Mm -hmm. And then men see a woman who is like, you were born here, right? Um, I was born in Idaho, but I was raised here. But yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. are like from here mm -hmm. are not the same way as the, the women that have come here to be part of the Vegas industry. Right. And all of the guys I've had bad dates with have been transplants. They're not from here. So, okay, so that's what I was asking. Yeah. Like, what is the dating pool of men that you're like, are, are like trying to fit into this mold of being like a good person for you to date? It's not, not great. <laughs> I, I don't, they're, all the guys that I've had bad dates with, with were not have, were not raised here. They didn't grow up here, so they're not from Vegas. Okay. So I mean, I really just think that it's luck of the draw. You know, I there it doesn't really matter where you're from or how you were raised because I'm sure some of these men were raised just fine, but for some reason they think that it's okay to act a certain way or they're gonna yeah. push their limits or their buttons. So I just think in Vegas, since it is such a melting pot, it's just you got to keep kissing the frogs until you can find the prince. I have so many theories about that that I've had for a long time and I haven't been in the dating scene for a long time. Right. So, and I've, I haven't been in the dating scene since online dating. Well, or like I don't know if you dating. want to. No, I know. I'm so happy. I don't ever I want to. But like when I hear these horror stories, I'm like, thank God. Like I didn't, I don't even think I had an iPhone like, when I started dating the person I'm yeah. with. So like Tinder wasn't an option, but, um, in general, something about Vegas that I might be completely off base, this might be my prejudgments, I don't know, but I really feel like the people who come here later in life, and they're, they're attracted to Vegas in some way that has something to do with like fakeness and an image of like being someone cool, unless they're coming here, because we do have a really cool like tech scene and like a lot of innovative stuff, unless mm -hmm. they're coming here for that, men and women alike are not coming here for the wrong reasons and then they get put into like our pool of friends dating partners business associates and they're extremely unreliable i agree with you 150 percent. it's like they might be in their 30s but they're trying to live like it they're 21 right you know i mean but i had a fake id when i was 16 so by the time i was actually <laughs> 21 like i was over the vegas scene i grew up here like it's i've been surrounded in it i mean we never come to the strip unless mm -hmm. maybe we're gonna try a new restaurant it's like right. everything that people think that vegas is locals are like no thanks. Like we don't go out and gamble unless people come into town and it's for fun. Usually, you know, like just and then things. 
I bet like men, if you're like, let's go on a date, are they down to like go laser tagging or do they want to go do like the club scene or a lounge at, on the strip? I want to go laser tagging. I know. I'm like paintball <laughs> laser tag. I'm like, if someone picked that, usually it's dinner. Usually it's dinner or drinks. Um, if they ask me for coffee, I'm always kind of like, mm. like I'm not even worth like dinner. Like, right. Tip, you know, for me as a woman, when guys are like, hey, want to grab coffee? One, I don't drink coffee. And two, I'm yeah, just like, just I'm me. all I'm worth is a $5 coffee in 30 minutes of your time. It's like an interview to see if you actually actually would want to spend the money to take me on a date but you should be like are you trying to hire me for your business or yeah because these are two different things yeah <laughs> I, I don't I can never tell so <laughs> okay well thank you so much uh Allie for coming on and sharing your experiences so honestly I know that so many of our viewers are can relate to that and I love living vicariously through you <laughs> knock on wood <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> and like maybe someday I'll meet somebody, but for now it makes for good storytelling for sure. Yeah, and I know I have a lot of friends that are in the same boat and I know that you're not alone. And you guys, if you are single and you want to put an end to her blog forever, <laughs> check her out. It's like a how I met your mother type of thing. Yeah, you know? Like, yeah, I love it. Uh, check her out at swipedout.wordpress.com and swipedoutlv on social media. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. Again, this is Allison Stagg. I'm Danielle Ford, and this has been another episode of Leading Las Vegas. Bye. If you loved this episode of Leading Las Vegas, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. You can also watch more episodes like this here or on leadinglasvegas.com.